I'm Molly Morrison for the Visual and Performing Arts program here at CK McClatchy VEPA. Welcome to our video guide for the VEPA portfolio. Before each VEPA teacher has a moment to give you their specific tips about their discipline, we thought we would go through uh, tips that are universal for submitting your portfolio. To be clear, in addition to your application and your references, you are required to submit a portfolio to be considered part of the VEPA program. Portfolios can be in the following disciplines, dance, music, theater, and visual arts. Specific portfolio requirements. All portfolios need to be submitted using Google Slides. Create a Google Slide that includes photos, videos, and text about your specific discipline. To insert your video, it will be necessary for you to upload it to YouTube prior to inserting it into your slide. And all videos should be under three minutes as a maximum. For visual art, you're going to include three to five photos on three to five Google Slides. Each Google Slide will include a, a photo of your visual artwork. In addition to that, you will include your name, the medium you chose, your meaning of the work, the process to create the work, and or the influence behind the work as some simple text, maximum three sentences, that helps us understand your artwork and your motivation for making art. For performing art, you'll be submitting a video of your monologue or performance. You'll be displaying your talent through a monologue or scene from a play. If your video is a group performance, using the text to the right or left, please describe what you look like and identify yourself, and also tell us what performance you're create what performance you're involved in, what play, the name of the play, and any details we would need to know. If you're performing a monologue, you'll be do following the same set of directions. You'll on the text to the right or left, you'll be including some information regarding that monologue. Say it's by Shakespeare and it's Hamlet, for example. You'll be inserting your video using a YouTube link. For dance, you'll be submitting a video of your performance. It's recommended that you create a solo performance in a large space or studio. If this is not possible and you need to submit a group performance, on the text to the right or the left, please describe uh, or, or identify yourself and also what you're performing. In all cases, it's important to let us know if you choreographed your dance piece or if it was choreographed by someone else. For music, it's the same as the information above for submitting your videos. It's either one long video of two performances or two videos of two separate performances. And Mr. Munoz will be describing more tips about these videos later in this film. For additional information, please visit ckmvapa.org. There are videos and lots of information there, uh, as well as written information and links to the district. We look forward to seeing your application in January, and thank you for your interest in VEPA. Hey there, my name is Jorge Munoz. I'm the music teacher of McClatchy High School. I'm here to give you a few tips on making an audition recording for the VEPA program. First, you should know that there are two major requirements for the recording. You need to have two pieces, one technical, one lyric. What that means is you want to have one piece that demonstrates how fast, quick, agile your fingering could be on an instrument or your singing is, and how lyric, how musical you can be, how well you can phrase the uh, shape of phrase and make things smooth and pretty. So a lot of you may be wondering where you could find music like this. Most of you guys are already in a band class, an orchestra class, or some sort of choir class in your middle schools. Most of your books there have companion books. For instance, if you have a beginning band book or a beginning orchestra book, there's companion books that go with it that have instrumental solos. If you're in a choir, it's the same sort of thing. If you're not in a choir and you're a vocalist, you could also find song books that are uh, at the, your local music store that have a lot of the stuff we're looking for here. The main thing you want to do is you want to avoid popular music, rap, rock, that sort of thing. This is more of a traditional uh, uh, music school type uh, uh, setup. So although we will have commercial um, applications that you, you will be using throughout your, your experience here, we really bring you in making sure that you know how to read music and you know a little bit about uh, following a conductor or being in an ensemble in general. A good first tip when making a, your recording is to make sure if you're an instrumentalist, to make sure you, the, the camera has a full view of your instrument 
your face, your whatever part of the body it takes for you to play. If you're a guitarist, you're someone in a frame where I can see the uh, evaluator can see both your hands and your full instrument. If you're a wind instrument notice, like you're playing a trombone or a clarinet or a flute, make sure your full instrument is in the frame of the shot, your face is in the shot, and your hands are in the shot so we can see what you're doing. So if you're going to play a couple notes, maybe on an angle such as this would be pretty good. That way there's no question that you're the one making the sound. If you're a pianist, if you play keyboard, a good place to put the camera would be maybe more to the side, over this way, so that I can see when we're evaluating your, your, your performance, we can see your hands and your body, so we make sure that you're the one that's actually playing. We have a lot of, uh, we want to make sure we're seeing every part of you, so we make sure we're actually getting a full, a, a full uh, representation of what you can do. Finally, if you're a vocalist, it would be a good idea if you could stand and try to get as much of your body in the frame. So when you're singing, we can see you're not just hear your voice through the recording, but actually see your body and see your frame. We want to see how you stand. We want to see if you've been trained how to get to that to, to the point of getting a good sound with your body. The next tip is to make sure we get to hear the best of you. We don't want, really want to hear accompaniment. So if you're doing a piece of music as a, as a flautist or a clarinetist, a saxophonist, whatever it is, no piano accompaniment, please. Nothing in the background, no background tracks. If you're a singer, no karaoke tracks, no... Uh, person accompanying you on the piano. We want to just hear your own personal sound as is. No recordings on any of these except for your own voice or your own instrument. One final tip, make sure your recording is the best representation of what you can do. Don't wait till the last minute. Make some time early to, to practice your music. Find some time with a teacher, your current band, orchestra, choir teacher, your current voice teacher, your current piano teacher. Make some time with them, have them listen to you, have them evaluate your performance so when you submit it, it's the absolute best you can turn in. You're going to be competing against a lot of other people for very few positions, so you want to make sure you send in the very best you possibly can. Make some time and it'll pay off in the end. Thanks. Hi, I'm Miss Barker. I teach drama here at McClatchy. I am here to give you tips when auditioning for the theater track in VEPA. The first thing you want to do is you want to choose a contemporary monologue that's two to three minutes long, no more than five minutes. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you rehearse it and memorize it. We need to be able to see your face and what you do physically on stage. The last thing you need to do is make sure that you introduce yourself before the monologue as if you were here live performing for us. It would look something like this. Hi, I'm Ms. Barker. I am playing Nora from A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. At that point, you'll perform your monologue. With those tips, I am sure, sure you'll be very successful here at McClatchy. Break leg. Hi, my name is Lenore Devereaux. I am the ceramics teacher, and I also can help you if after watching this video you have any other questions, you can email me. I am the go-to person for gathering all of your portfolios and your applications. Today I'm going to give you three tips to help with your 3D portfolio. Your first tip would be to not pad any of your portfolios. So if you have some three awesome works from your eighth grade year, um, include just those three. If you have a seventh, um, some work from your seventh grade year that's not so good, um, don't include those in your portfolio just to have five because um, it could end up hurting you instead of helping you. So make sure all of your works are along the same caliber. Um, your tip number two is to um, photograph your work from two vantage points. So use natural lighting and work outside or near a window and have a nice neutral background when you photograph your work. Um, your third tip is to in two to three sentences, explain your vision for your work. So you can say, in this piece I wanted to explore the human expression and talk about um, the color schemes that you use to help the expression. So you use, say, you can say you use monochromatic color scheme um, to complement the expression. And your fourth tip would be um, when you're submitting your work, um, be clear about your name, your phone number, and an email address. Use an email address that you use often. Um, I hope that helps, and good luck submitting your portfolios. 
Good morning, my name is Miss Baker and I am the um, 2D art teacher for all levels of art here at McClatchy. Um, I have three tips for your portfolio um, submission. First, all work should be neat and complete. Any sketches that are unfinished, dirty, or torn should not be a part of your portfolio. Second, always photograph your work in good light and on neutral backgrounds. Make sure that all images fill up the slides so that the evaluators can see all the details. Please remember that blurry images will result in a lower score for your portfolio. Also, make sure your portfolio will open for anyone. The easiest way to do that is to send it to a friend to make sure that it opens for them before you submit it to us. Hi, and welcome to Tutorials with Tibidu. I am one of the math teachers here at McClatchy. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, composition, angles, and distances. I am sitting in a standard classroom chair, and I wanted to give you examples for how to take pictures of really mundane things and make them more interesting. So, when you are taking pictures of any subject, it's best not to take it in the middle. So if you tic-tac-toe your frame, you can put it in one of the four intersections. You can make the subject horizontal, so that way it will take up either one-third or two-thirds, either on the top or on the bottom. You can also do one-third or two-thirds vertically. Then you can have two subjects or one long subject that goes from one intersection to the other intersection diagonally or two subjects that also create an opposite intersection. The last composition that's hardest to do is center focused, where the main subject is in the center and everything else is focusing in around it, like a hallway or a firework has all of the things exploding out from the middle. However, just putting something in the middle of a photo is no composition and very ugly. Please don't do this in your photos. When you're taking pictures of something, uh, moving closer always makes it more interesting, and so the closer you get to it, the more details and aspects of the subject you can get. Moving around your subject also helps. You can see the back, the side, you can go under, you can go over. Changing all your angles and distances makes your subject more interesting in addition to adding composition to it. Hi, I'm Anita Kalk at McClatchy High School, and I am the dance teacher here, and once you get ready to present your videos, I have a few tips for you. First off, make sure you look good in the video. Have your hair back, make sure you're wearing something that is contrasting color to the background where you're dancing, assuming that you're dancing in a nice, large, open space like this. If you are going to be turning in a video of you participating in a company dance or a portion of a play, then you need to make sure that you tell me which dancer that you are and what was the significance of this dance in the production. Um, also, if you are in that group dance, make sure you designate which person you are so we know who to look at. If you're the third person in from the right, or the blue scarf, whatever the case may be. Um, if you are creating your own dance, then you need to make sure that your music selection is clean that has no foul words in it or overtly sexual things in it. Um, if you are videoing or having somebody video you, they need to try to have your entire body visible as you're dancing. So I can see not only your arms and your facial expressions, but also your feet and your great technique and timing. Um, your production number needs to be no more than a minute and a half to two minutes but it needs to be at least that long, highlighting your strengths of flexibility, strength, technique, and timing. Can't wait to see your video, and have a great day.